Hi everyone, and welcome to CBC with yet another episode of Tom and Tom Talk Comics. It's been a long time coming. Uh, the reason for that is we did shoot like four extra episodes, which were lost, unfortunately. Yeah. The footage for them was lost, so we're having to just record again. So Essentially, yeah. those episodes have turned into episodes of Doctor Who now, forever. Yeah, maybe they'll turn up in 50 years' time, just before the CBC anniversary. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I went to Boston recently, and some of you may know this place, uh, Newbury Comics. The reason why it's called Newbury Comics is the original shop was actually on Newbury Street in Boston. Oh. And um, so, and it was established back in the late 80s and everything like that, so it needs the comics That's I bought back. That's 1978. Yeah, so nice, yeah, back in the late, late 70s. 70s. Yep. And here we go. Yeah, so I've got quite a bit here, so yeah. where, where should we start? You want to start with, issue, with the first issue? Yeah. Uh, you actually bought this one for me, yeah. it's a gift from America. Oh, just uh, it's the it's, you won't be able to see it clearly actually because it's not on autofocus the camera but this is Batman 66 the Sandman Awakens and uh, I'll cut in a close up shot of this yeah. it's the um, Sandman was he a new villain for, for the thing or was he one created for this comic you know I'm not sure because there's so many iterations of Sandman there's obviously the Spider-Man one yeah. there's Neil Gaiman or Neil Gaiman's Sandman yeah. series but I don't know, maybe he was in there. It seems like the sort of villain that would have been. Yeah, because it's just got that sort of thing. And if you look if you look through it as well, there's... Um, um, like, I never read these comics. I've only seen what Tom showed me. And I've got to admit, it does keep to the whole campy style of what Batman looks like. So oh, yeah. It's it, worth... it is very true to the yeah. original series. If you like the 60s show, just at least try to give this a read to yeah. see what you think of it, at least. Even the Catwoman in this issue is actually the black Catwoman from towards the end of the show's run, which is pretty yeah. cool. And I think that's the first issue with Batgirl in it as well. Which is one oh yeah, it's out. introducing Batgirl back into the comic, so... And here's the other one. This is Adventure Time. I'm kind of a fan of Adventure Time. I love Adventure Time. It's, it's, it's amazing. Brilliant. And this is like a special cover edition, you can tell, because yeah. it's just like... I'll big... cut in here with a close-up of the cover so you'll be seeing it on screen. Yeah, and basically I just picked that up and I thought it was just quite nice. I haven't read it just yet, as you can tell, the set of tapes still in the seal frame and everything like that. Yeah, so... it's still sealed into its bag. Yeah, so I haven't read it yet, so I'm probably going to read it at some point. But yeah, I just picked it up because of the cover. And everything yeah, like that. it's, just an, it's an awesome cover, as everyone watching can see. Yeah. And this one has actually been reviewed on the comic book cast. Yes, Superior Spider-Man, a series that I put off reading for a long time because someone told me it was terrible. Uh, that person, I no longer take his opinion on comics particularly seriously, so I gave it a read and I ended up reading 21 issues in one night. This is basically, I say this was this would have been the answer to the whole muck up with the Clone Saga in the 90s, basically, because they were hinting at this for quite a while, was that... Um, ben Riley was going to take over as Spider-Man and Peter was going to go away. Yeah, and they did for a little while. They did it for a little while, but they didn't stick with it. Yeah. This, on the other hand, watched the, or the 90s answers to fixing that from what, what should have been. Mm. But it only took uh, Marvel 10 years onwards to actually do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird at this era in comic books because all, basically, the two main comics, the Ultimates and Superior at the moment... There's no Peter Parker and yeah. Spider-Man. It's weird. Yeah, it is. And the weird thing is, there's another series, Superior Spider-Man Team Up, which I believe is being reviewed for the channel as well. Yeah. And uh, in that, I think in issue three or four, Kane comes back as Scarlet yeah. Spider in it. So, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Okay. The next one we got is kind of a critically acclaimed one. Um, the He's originally was made by Alan. Was it Alan Moore? Well, he re Watchmen. he recreated. It, yeah, he so recreated. Like, it, yeah. He had a completely different origin story when he was first introduced, and then Alan Moore came in and introduced this whole new thing that was yeah. a much stronger yeah. take on the character. And yeah, Swan, stories. Swamp Thing came back uh, before the whole Fifty Two thing because of the whole Darkest Night thing. Who mm. was he originally dead for a long time? I think he was for a little while. I mean, there yeah. was there was tons of things that's happened with Swamp Thing that I haven't been keeping up on, yeah. but. The weird thing is, I've always got a soft spot for Swamp Thing just because my favourite Superman comic is the one that I referred to a couple of times on the podcast. It's the one where Superman trips balls on Kryptonian shrooms <laughs> and then goes to the jungle and blasts a load of the jungle with his heat vision and Swamp Thing saves his life. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a really trippy book. Like It's written in a, non, in a very non-linear style that's almost like you are on these Kryptonian shrooms when you're reading it. It's very difficult to sort of... It's, I wouldn't say it's difficult to keep track of, but as a kid, I had real trouble reading that book. And uh, 
yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about that book when I was holding a completely different one in my hands, but if you haven't read it, look it up. I think it's called The Scarlet Jungle or something yeah, like that. I think it was, yeah. yeah. And here we go, Guardian. <laughs> Guardian of the Galaxy. Why don't you just pull up all yeah. of the Guardians you've got, just to show... Yeah. We've got a lot of... I picked up a... Yeah, what's this, the first five issues? Yeah, well, it's the closest I can get to the first five issues. Yeah, so there'll be a close-up shot of this, obviously, that you're seeing as I'm talking. And, uh, yeah. yeah. What are you thinking of Guardians of the Galaxy so far? Um, I, I love this series. It's interesting, it's different. That's one yeah. best way to put it, because it's like... Um, the camera, the characters are very endearing. They're very, I wouldn't say relatable, but they're like a bunch of. The best way I can describe it in like media terms is that they remind me of like misfits a little bit. Right. Yeah. yeah. In the sense that they're like um, they're like a group of people wouldn't you wouldn't really imagine working together, and they basically just came together to work and. It, it, it clicks, it works, it, it's yeah. enjoyable. I mean, it's a similar sort of thing that they were going for with the Avengers movie, that the characters are very different to each other, so they won't necessarily get along all the time. But strangely, with Guardians, they do get mm. along quite well. Yeah, and also... And I love Rocket Raccoon. Oh, he's, Groot. he's brilliant. I am Groot. I am Groot. But I, <laughs> I did saw one little funny little fan art, it's basically because since the reboot of 52, Poison Ivy got attracted to plant-like creatures now. Right. And she's very sexual towards them. And basically, they had a picture of Groot at a, 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 a dinner table. And Boy Lowe basically just jumps him. And basically, he said, I am Groot, I am Groot. And then, and then she said, I, You got me at Groot. You got me at I am. <laughs> and I thought, Brilliant. Poison Ivy's always been kind of a strange character. Yeah. And here's the next one uh, Injustice Gods Among Us, issue one. That's um yeah that's basically they're re-releasing these again or continuation of um of injustice. Because, oh, it's the annual, it's the injustice yeah. gods among us annual issue. Uh, that, number one. That's been released because um, all the whole DLC stuff coming out, mm. and also it's been re-released again mainly because um the golden edition is being released at the moment um yeah. on PlayStation Four, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, PlayStation Three, and it basically contains all the DLC on the disc already. Yeah, and um, as she, and um, Lobo is one of the DLC characters in it. And Lobo is one of those characters that I haven't read enough of, but every time I do see him in a comic, I yeah. get slightly excited because he's usually just badass. And yeah, he's... you don't know what he's going to do. Yes, yeah, he's he... unpredictable. Yeah, and here's one that you you might be quite interested in, considering that you're being reviewing the Powerpuff Girls stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is IDW. <laughs> They've been doing a lot of Cartoon Network based. Comics lately. I mean, the only one I read personally is Powerpuff Girls because that was my one of my favourites. They had so many of those Powerpuff Girl comics. In Samurai the Jack was just the sort of wrong era for me, where um, I I didn't watch it purely because at that time was right as our cable got cut off as a kid, oh. and I kept seeing the advertising for it, and then it got cut off like literally the day before it was supposed to premiere. And I was like, you know what? You missed out. Yeah, I was I was kind of pissed off, and I was like, you know what? I'm not really that bothered, but now I kind of do. Yeah, I it's, can see it. dude, it's a multi-time Emmy Award winner. Oh yeah, show. I know. <laughs> it's brilliant. That's it's uh, it's. I know it's supposed to be really, really good. It's very it? artistic as well in some of the episodes. Like mm. one of the best ones we've got is Seasons, and that's basically that's done with no talking at all. Well, there's that conspiracy theory, isn't there? That because a lot of similar stuff from Powerpuff Girls turns up in Samurai Jack. It's well, actually the same universe. well, yeah, because. Um, Apparently, Samurai Jack yeah. is the professor. Yeah, that's one of the theories <laughs> behind it. Yeah. But yeah, the same people who worked on Samurai Jack worked on Powerpuff Girl, Dexter's Laboratory. Um, I love that. If IDW um, put out a Dexter's Laboratory comic, if they haven't already, shit, I'm that, guessing I'll have to look that up. I think IDW got all the Cartoon Network. It's kind of weird because um, Cartoon Network is owned by um, Warner Brothers, and I'm surprised um, they didn't gave it basically kept, put it onto their own comic book company, yeah. DC. Well, maybe they do it. Maybe they just didn't want it. IDW yeah. tend to take a lot of the comics that the other studios don't yeah, want like, and make them good. <laughs> I think at the moment, because they're doing Powerful Girls, Channel Jack and Transformers at the moment. Yeah. My Little Pony advertising. Yeah, and they're doing My Little Pony. There were so many on My Little Pony comics in that oh, shop. I know from when I was in America recently how much they just love My Little Pony. It's... It's my model. Thankfully, the whole brony thing hasn't taken off in England quite as much as it has in America. Thank God. But let's face it, anyone with an internet connection is aware of how big <laughs> My Little Pony has got. Yeah. And there we go. Next oh, one. Another Superior Spider-Man. Superior um, Spider-Man annual. Yep. And, what, uh, what, what, 
I never understood this. What's the whole point of adding annual onto the actual comic? Is it just a reprint, or is it something else completely different? I, I think they're actually new stories. I mean, this I'm look, clicking through it now, and it's the stuff with Morbius the Vampire. And yeah, I don't know. I I don't think I've actually read this one, no. which is weird because I thought I'd read all the Superior Spider-Mans, but apparently I haven't read the annual. Well, if you if you want to read that, go ahead. I'll be reading it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> And here's one I picked up. It's more of an indie comic. It's made by um, Black Mask. Black Mask and Soul Temple. And Soul Temple. It's a clock joint. It's called the the Twelve Reasons to Die. Yeah. It's kind Introducing of Introducing Ghostface Killer. It's the first issue, and I thought to myself, you know what? If this does pick up, at least I can say I got the first issue of it. I had to have a little giggle when I saw the name Ghostface Killer. As yeah, well, it was Sean. Recently, I was discussing with Sean, our resident black guy on the show and we were saying how all the uh, so-called racist names for white people aren't really that insulting like I think it's quite funny when I get called a honky or a cracker uh, but I, he said what about if you get called a ghost face and I said you know what ghost face is fucking awesome <laughs> yeah because I mean, as you can see the artwork's very similar to um, like the Silent Hill comics and stuff like that That's cool. and I'm trying to think the other art style it reminds me of and, and I just had it in my head I can't remember what it is I've seen the art style a few times in certain Batman comics, but only in like yeah. the um, specific Marvel zombies issues. A bit like Marvel maybe. zombies, a little bit yeah, with the graining and stuff like that. A bit like Batman Year One. It's it, yeah, it's it's it's, it's eerie. It's almost a retro style to some of it. Yeah, sort of like Judge Dredd a little bit as well. Yeah, it's very very sort of. Oh, now I remember um, the original Men in Black comics. I never read those. Uh, if you look at the art style, it's very similar. <laughs> to that so I don't know if the artist has got the same involved and this is my personal favourite I picked up from the collection Harley Quinn issue zero yep boy um this is basically supposed to kick off the whole Harley Quinn recently she's getting a lot more popular now ever since the reboot of 52 I know she was popular then I think the uh, Arkham video games added to the popularity yeah added to the popularity a lot I've always liked Harley Quinn though but I, I like the Reed design. It's quite interesting with the like the black hair and the red hair and everything. Like. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, if you look at the front cover, those are all the comic book artists that contribute to this issue. Yeah, and it, like, it's contrib- a pretty big event issue. Yeah. And there are uh, the only downside I'll say to this is well, I wouldn't say that's the downside. I think the downside <laughs> is a few pages behind that. Go back. The these books. Unfortunately, all the DC books these days seem to be full of adverts for Arrow involving shirtless men. And uh, So um, imagine if you're reading this and your mum comes walking in or your dad and basically sees you and it has that. Well, it's official. He's gay, love. <laughs> He's gay, love. I knew those comics were bad for him. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. And also, the one art which I'm quite pleased that was in there, you recognise the artist. Jim Lee. Yeah. Jim Lee. Jim Lee's just got such a defining style that you could recognise his yeah. artwork from. and Bruce uh, is that Bruce, Bruce Tim? yeah Bruce Tim did some some of it as well based on the old oh, image the one image down here makes me laugh I don't know if you can see it we'll do a close up shot yeah. anyway I'm just going to show you Harley naked in church <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, that's the artist I was telling you about that um, doesn't normally commit to schedules yeah but yeah it's like, quite funny it's very enjoyable and yeah, it leads into it, into the new series, so I can't wait to see it. Oh, and, and that was the moment that the camera stopped recording for some reason. Uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you get more episodes. Sorry it's been so long between this one and the last one. And I'm also just going to apologise as well, because it's probably going to be a long time before the next one too. Just so you know.